Okay, I will be. Okay, I am starting. Okay. I will be called them now, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. I will be called now. Okay, is it visible to you? Okay, yeah. On with uh, uh, zoom in. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. You can start, sir. Maybe there is an income uh, limit. Welcome. Okay, they will come. Okay, no problem. So <clears throat> now I would like to show you the basic question. This one, this problem. Uh, take a look. Uh, what they say, right? But do not solve the mesh equations for the network shown in the figure 2.9. So in this figure, uh, three loops are there. So you have to write the mesh equations. So how to do it? First of all, take a look at the loop one and loop two and loop three, three loops. So we have to do what? We have to write the equations according to the loop. Okay, so first one, so what you have to write, you have to write that one, that is one, plus one, that is two, plus two s into i one s. That means for the loop one, look carefully for the loop one, loop one, two into i, one, two into i one, because one, this one and this one, if you add them, then it will be two. Plus two s i one. That means this one. Now you have to deduct something. Which one you have to deduct? You have to deduct uh, i two. 
minus I2 minus 2SI2 minus I3, which is equal to what? Which is equal to DS, which is equal to B, this one. Now, if you write this carefully, I1 into 2 plus 2s, right? 2 plus 2s minus I2, 1 plus 2s minus I3 is equal to P. That is for the first loop. That is for the first loop. For the second loop, loop two. What do you write? First, first write this loop equation. Now see, four s plus three s plus two s. That means what? Four. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 2 minus 9 is I2, 9 is I2 plus I2 minus I1 minus 2s I1 and minus 4s I3. Is equal to what is equal to zero. Now, if you do rearrange this one, then what you get? Uh, if you take common I1, then it would be minus one minus twice. That is the I1. And then take the I2. Equation of the I2 would be 1 plus 9s and equation of the I3 for a simple is zero. That is the second equation. First equation, second equation. Now we for the loop 3, see first write these equations. Uh, are you with me? Are you following? Guys, try to understand. Yes, sir. Okay, for this one, first, this is R. So I3 and that is one plus plus four S I3 plus one by S I3 minus I1. Minus four s i three is equal to zero. Now do the rearrangement for the i one minus i one and i two minus four s i two plus i three. Take the common one, one plus four s plus one by s. These are the three equations we have. Uh, like this, you have to write the mesh equations.
let's move on. See what I write it to. Like three questions. To solve this using a magnet. Now move on to the another one, which is the operation amplifier. Okay. Okay, is an electronic device. Okay, is look like this. That is operation amplifier. Okay. Operation amplifier. The electronic amplifier. It is what it is an electronic amplifier and which used to implement transfer functions. Which is used to implement transfer functions. So it has the following characteristics. See, so these are the figure of the oven. This is the basic one. Differential input V2 minus V1. Say this is V2 and V1. The difference between them is the difference. High input impedance. And that means zi is into high. Yeah. Output input is zero. Okay. High constant gain amplification. The output can be given as like this. The equation of the output of this. Okay. That is the basic characteristics of the operation amplifier. That means the open. Basic of the open is given below. Differential input V2 minus V1. High input impedance, low output impedance, high constant gain amplification, and output is given by this. Okay, so that is the operation amplifier. That is the schematic uh, for an inverting operation amplifier. You see, this is the inverting operation amplifier. And that is the inverting option for configured for transfer function of realization between the amplifier gain is omitted. See, for the inverting amplifier, the positive uh, ray would be in the ground. This one, positive input would be in the ground. And source would be connected with this. This terminal. Two terminal. Positive terminal is connected with the ground. Any terminal is connected to source. And two resistors are connected to like this. Here is the output. That is what? That is the inverting operation amplifier. Remember, in the inverting operation amplifier, positive would be connected. Positive terminal would be added with the ground. Okay, now inverting a version of the pair. Few more things we have to consider. If V2 is grounded, see if V2 is grounded, the amplifier is called an inverting a version of the pair. For the inverting a version of the pair, we have the output is equal to minus a V1. How does it come? Do you remember V0, V output? You write again. A B two minus B one. Now, if B two is zero because it is grounded, then it will be minus A B one. That is for the inverting. For the inverting,
So you understand how it comes. If two impedances are connected to the inverting operation required, as shown here, you will see, we can drive an interesting result. Elkner has the characteristic mentioned in the beginning of this subsection. If the input impedance to the input is high, see, input impedance is high, then partial current law, according to the partial current law, I is equal to zero, I is equal to minus I to S. So since the gain A is large, A is large, plus I1 is equal to B I S by Z I S. And minus I2 is equal to minus B naught by Z. If you see now the two currents, B naught by Z is equal to minus B1 by Z1. And the transfer function of the inverting operation for the pair is shown. Transfer function of the inverting operation of the pair. B naught by B i equal to minus Z two by minus zero. Okay, remember this one minus Z two by Z one. That is the B naught by B i, which is the transfer function. So transfer function is Z two by Z one is the transfer function. For the for this one, inverting operation amplifier. Okay, V naught by Z two minus V i by Z one. So V naught by V i minus Z two uh, by okay. here that is the equation. Sorry, that is the diagram. See, this is zero. Plus I one. That is the I A, B A, B output. That is the Z two. So this one is the transfer function equation of the inverting operation amplifier. Converting operation amplifier transfer function given here. Okay, now look at a problem. What a problem here? Find the transfer function B naught by B i for the circuit given in the figure. A circuit is given. So from this circuit, you have to find out the transfer function, which is the B naught by B i. What is the definition of transfer function? Do you remember the output divided by input of the laptop transfer? If you consider a block system, then the output of the system divided by the input of the system is known as the transfer function. So, if you consider this one as a system like this, if you consider this a system, then that is the input, that is the output. So, output is B naught, input is Bi. So, transfer function will be B naught by. Yeah. Okay, that is the system. That is the system. That is the B naught by B I. Okay, now look at here how to tabulate. it. Okay, see. So we have first of all we need to find out. We know what uh, from the previous slide. We know that minus z two by zero. That means 
that is Z2 and that is Z1. Z2, Z1. So I will make the formula V0 by VI into minus Z2 by Z1. So what is the Z2? Z2 is that, that is Z1 and that is Z2. Okay, so we need to calculate this one. Then we will find this. So first of all, Z1. This is what? This is parallel. This is 1 by R1 plus 1 by C1. This is the C1. One over Z1 is equal to this. C1 is actually one by C1. One over C1. Uh, now, say Z1, then Z1 will be what? C1S and we are on the C1S uh, C1S C1S The transformation of the third side is win by equation two point nine seven. C is that the radius of the parallel component X, Z1 is the reciprocal of the sum of the evidences. Okay, so evidence is what? Parallel component X. Oh, it is simple one, not a complicated one. Since parallel component, that means C1 is 1 by R1 is. So just Got it. Evidence here comes the evidence. Evidence y y is equal to uh, c one s plus one by r. So z is equal to one by c one s plus one by r. Now put the value C1 as value C1 5.6 microfarad and R1 value 360 kilo, then you get this one. And for the Z2, these are in the series. So impedances are at R2 plus 1 by C. Just put the values. Remember this one. Here the admittance. 
and there the impedance. While in the series, impedance would be added. While in the parallel, impedance would be added. For the impedance, it would be one by R two, and for the impedance, it would be on the R two. Now put the value uh, zero one uh, z two by zero one. Yeah, minus. This comes here. Z two plus one over z two. Uh, z one. Now put the value and make it the calculation then you get it. So that is the now now comes to the non inverting one so what is the non inverting uh the first one we are started to the ground Another circuit that can be analyzed for its transfer function is the non-inverting operation amplifier circuit shown in figure 2.12. We now drive the transfer function. The non-inverting transfer function. So we see that V naught, that is the V output A by S minus V1S. V I S minus V1, that is the difference. And by applying the voltage division rule, Z1 divided by Z1 plus Z2 into that is the V1. And substituting this equation into this one because V1 the and simplifying you obtain. We obtain what? This okay. Now look at the difference between the transfer functions for the inverting amplifier, inverting operation amplifier. The transfer function was V0 by VI is equal to minus Z2 by Z1. But the non inverting operation, non inverting operation, the transfer function becomes Z1 plus Z2 divided by Z1. Z1 plus Z2 divided by Z1. That is the new. That is the transfer function of the non inverting operation amplifier. V0 by VI is equal to Z1 plus Z2 divided by Z1. Okay. So find the transfer function V0 by VI is for the circuit given in the figure. So here, uh, like the previous one, like the previous one, similar kind of circuit. That is the Z1. This is the Z2. So for the Z1, Z1 
sensitive series R1 plus 1 over C1s. And for the Z2, since it's parallel, uh, so something like that. Since it is parallel, so we can write that uh, since it is parallel, uh, one over z two is equal to One over two plus one by two plus, or we can write two into one by C two S. Uh, one by C two S plus. So Z2 will become R2 into 1 over C2S plus 1 over c -S. Okay. Now you, you apply this one into Which equation? This equation. Z1 plus Z2 divided by Z2. That is the equation you have to consider. Okay, now I'll show you another one. Now I'd like to show you the book. By the way, where are your other friends? Very poor. Sir, last night we have a national national day for our country. That's why I'm not coming home. Oh, last class cancelled. No, 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 not last class. Last night, we have a part for National Day in our country. So that's why they are not coming for all. Let me show you another one. Book from the book, and now I will go to the book. Yes, sir. Okay, so we, we have seen this electrical apparatus of functions. Uh, these, these are gone. Now look at here, translational mechanical systems. Translational mechanical systems.
Translation Michael system means we are converting this electrical network into mechanical one. See this. A spring, viscous damper, and mass. Three components. What are these? Force velocity, force displacement, and impedance translational relationships for springs, viscous dampers, and mass. Okay. Force velocity. If you connected a system with a spring, then there will be some and if you write it say viscous damper, then some equations will there be there. And for the mass, some equations will be there. Uh, the following set of symbols and units is used throughout this book. Following symbols. See, F is equal to N newtons. Newtons, Ft force. And Xt, Xt, that is the distance it covers, which is the meters. V which is the velocity. That is meter per second. And K is a constant, which is Newton per meter. F is another constant, which is Newton second per meter. And M is the uh, mass, which is kg, kilograms, Newton second square per meter. So this, thing, this K is the spring constant. F is the viscous damper constant. Mass is mass. Okay. Uh, Let's see here some thing is given. See mechanical systems parallel electrical networks to such an extent that there are analogies between the components and drills. Now, like mechanical systems have three positive, three passive linear components. Two of them, the spring and the mass, mass, and are analogous to these elements. One of them, the viscous damper, dissipates energy. The two energy storage elements are analogous to the to electrical energy storage element, the inductor and the capacitor. The energy dissipator is analogous to electrical resistance. Let us take a look. Okay. Now see what they have said here. Energy storage elements are analogous to the energy storage element, the inductor and the capacitor. That is spin. Uh, spring plus mass. These two, these two are the analogous to the spring, uh, the inductor and the capacitor. And the viscous damper, which is related to the, which is analogous to the resistor. The energy dissipator is analogous to electrical resistance. Let us look, uh, take a look at this mechanical situation here. K, FD, and M are called the spin constant, coefficient of viscous friction, and mass, which we just Okay. The spin constant, coefficient of viscous, uh, viscous friction, and the mass are called respectively. This, this is the important thing we need to remember. So now come here, what we have seen, is spring and mass. These two are analogous to inductor, inductor and capacitor. Inductor and capacitor. And this is raised. Okay, you understand? Yes. So this, this is the thing, the difference. Now, move on to the next. An example, look at an example. Now you have to find the transfer function of this one, this system. Find the transfer function Xs by Fs of the system you have to put in it. 
that is a mass spring and damper system. That is the damper, that is the spring, and that is the mass. This kind of system you have to find out by uh, axis by axis. Okay, now, first of all, you have to draw. You have to draw the free body diagram. Now, consider the mass here. So, one force, Ft is uh, in this direction, for our direction, Xt also working on the for our direction. Xt is actually the displacement. How long it displaced? Okay. That is the displacement. And now for the Kx, K is the viscous damper. Uh, look at the K. It works in this direction. It, it also works in direction. Math is also works in this direction. Kxp, Fb, D, 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 X, X, M, D, S, D, D, S, D, S, S. Okay. Now, we do what? Now convert this to the S domain or the frequency domain. So K axis, M T S axis, M S square axis, we are the axis, we are the axis. Now put the equation. Summation of this. Summation of this. These three, these three is in, the summation of these three is equal to f. Simple, simple one. The summation of these three is equal to f. Now, instead of this, write kxs plus ABS, kxs plus ms square x. Let me show you. Kx plus plus x plus m s is equal to k. Now do what take the x is common? X is common, which is k plus fps plus m s square. So do one thing x of this by a for this is equal to one over a plus a s plus that is the transfer function of this mechanical system. Okay, you understand? Yes, sir. I yes, think sir. you do. We understand, sir. We understand. That is the thing. Yes, sir. So see here instead of uh, spring we can fs is equal to kxs fs fs xs fs ms square xs so z is equal to fs by xs z z is equal to impedance fs by xs you can write like this Or the F is equal to ZM indexes. Now move on to the next one, next problem. Another problem is given. Find the transfer function X2 by FS for the system, uh, for this system. Now see here, two things are given, two mass are given. A2 in between, AP3 in between. 
Okay, so I this one kind of kind of larger one from uh, if you consider the previous one. Find the tensor function of this one. So first of all, we have to consider M1 and M2. Now see, for the M1, which uh, forces are working in which direction? We have to consider this. M1 and M2, then we write two equations. Okay, for the M1, K1, now see the directions. For the M1, K1 is working in this direction. If B is working this direction, maths. And K2 is working in this direction. If it is working in this direction, it is working in this direction. This one is working in this direction. See, X1 is in the direction. K1 is in direction, AP is in direction, mass in directions. Okay, and these are in direction. Okay. And another one is working in this direction. So take the sum and you will get this one. Similar things happen for the M2. That means, first of all, uh, draw the free body diagram. Then write like this. Okay. Now look at the first transform. Just uh, put these equations. Okay, from see two equations are there. From these two equations, you have to find out. You can find out this is x two by f one by applying the Kramer rule. See, equation is x two by f s. X two by f s. Two by F S uh, for the X two. What do you have to write? For the X two, write this X one thing. One X square. It be one plus. Yes, plus K one plus K two. That is for the X one. Here that is and the delta X two minus yes plus K two. Here to zero. Then what would happen? This thing will be cancel out. And if this one will remain minus three x plus eighteen to x. Uh, and it should come here. So, or we can write x2 by f to f, f is equal to a b3 x plus a2. That is the equation, that is the transfer object. There is a transfer function. See, here that is that. So remember this thing that here, consider M1 and M2 first individually for the M2. For the M2, sorry, for the M1, K is working here, M is working here, and Mass one at the K. It is working here in this direction. Here, one division is working here, and another one working here. Same thing happened for this one. 
similar thing will happen. One will increase which two forces will be here. This kind of equation will come. This kind of equation will come if you do the problem. Now look at another one, last one for this topic. Uh, right, but do not solve the equation of motion for the mechanical mechanism. This, this mechanical system is given. So first of all, you need to write the equations for this one. So first consider the M1, for the M1, K is working here. M is working here, M1. And K2 is working here. And is working here. If the three, if the three, one is here, one is here. Okay. And X one is working here. That is for M one. Now consider the C. That is the uh, formula. Sum of impedances connected to the motion at x1 into x1 minus. minus sum of mirrors between x1 and x2 x2 minus sum of mirrors between x1 and x2 x2 sum of that is x1. Same formula, they applied. And the depth is a fix. Same thing M2. M3. Right, but do not solve. Okay, just you check this out. And another one is a uh, rotational mechanical system. That was the translational mechanical system, right? That was which I have discussed so far. That is the translational mechanical system. Translational mechanical system, transfer function. Now, another one is there, which is uh, rotational mechanical system. Rotational mechanical system, transfer function. Rotation, you have to consider the rotation here. Rotation does not be system. Okay, I think uh, I completed in the next class. Okay. So, rotation mechanical system and transfer function system with the gear. Two things left. We would uh, add these two in the last. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so, okay now I have to take the attendance of loads. Okay, today is third. Yes, sir. Today you have lab or uh, Thursday you have lab. Thursday lab. Thursday lab. Today on theory, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fourteen. Yes, sir. One. 18, 10, and 9. And 12. 12 is there. Oh, 12. Yes, sir. 14, 1, 18, 10, 9, 12. There's yes, one. sir. And 18. And? 18, 18. 18, 18. Yes, sir. Allah, sir. Allah, sir. Thank you, sir. Allah, sir. Okay, Allah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir.